Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're still watching Cairo Local Time live on Nile TV International. And we're glad to host today live at the studio uh, one of the youth who is working in the field of marketing of the uh, new administrative capital, Basil Haggag, real estate analyst, fintech developer. Hello, and thank you very much for joining us. Hello, it's my pleasure to be here today. Well, uh, Bess, I would like you uh, to start uh, by telling us more about how do you see the significance of the new administrative capital? Well, all right, to get into this re real quick, um, the new capital right now, it has an investment by 70 to 80 billion dollars. Okay, so if we're looking more about this investment, this actually brings more, more, more and more investors in the, uh, in the new administrative capital. And also, according to Modis, they are expected to 5.5% a GDP increase. Mm -hmm. And in your opinion, by this uh, kind of uh, information, what do you think when a country have a 5.5% increase in a GDP? Mm -hmm. It will attract, simply, mm -hmm. more investors. So in the, in the future term, they are expected an increase of the GDP by 16 percentage, mm -hmm. which is something amazing yes. for the economic significance. Uh, how far will this project serve to absorb a large part of the Egyptian population? Okay. The Egyptian population, we're like uh, um, one, million, 1 million people right now, I think, yeah. So how this project 100 will... Million. 100 million, yeah. Uh, how this project would serve the population of Egypt. Actually, if we we'll take a look about the industrial part of the new administrative, there is like a lot of new project has been come to, uh, to the ground. Like for example, the monorail, the monorail stations, which will you know, link approximately all Egypt together in a transportation, which will ease the transportation process in you know, the kind of old the mm -hmm. Administrative capital includes the arts uh, and the uh, culture, the new opera house and the uh, Egypt International City for the Olympic Games. How far these services help you in marketing the new administrative capital? All right, let me, let me divide these into two parts. First, the new opera house. Well, the new opera house, this will attract a lot of not just um, Egyptian musicians, but international musicians like, you know, the sopranos from the opera all, all around the globe. And the second part, the Olympics. Mm -hmm. As you can see right now, we have the, the Tokyo Olympics. We have a lot of Egyptian pioneers have taken a lot of medals there. When you're a marketing for the new administrative capital, I'm saying in the future, we will host the Olympics here in Egypt. This will lead of what? A lot of sponsors, a lot of investors here in Egypt is that that will give us back to the point number one, the economic significance that will increase a lot of more investment in Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the uh, most effective means uh, to market any project specifically amid the uh, COVID-19? Technology. Mm -hmm. Technology. We're talking about business informatics today. Back then, before uh, before COVID-19, everything used to be on a paper field and things like that. Mm -hmm. But now with the technology, especially the business informatics, everything now on a data. So mm -hmm. if I want to make a purchase, say a residential unit, back later I have to go through a hundred million processing. Now from your phone or even from the website, you can make a purchase of your residential unit. Not just the residential, but even a commercial unit, medical unit, hospitality and whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you believe that the uh, government shift to the uh, new administrative capital uh, is, will provide better health care and educational services? Will this be an attraction to uh, residents, Egyptian residents, to move on there? Well, I do believe yes, but not right now i do believe people will start to accept moving to the new administrative capital maybe from five to six to ten years because okay the shift is very powerful the shift is very amazing and it will improve health care you know they're they are building a lot of smart hospitals they yeah. are building a lot of um let me say a lot of international standard quality yeah. hospitals but for the people for the population to start accepting moving, they will take time. Yeah. What do you say for those who have fears that the new city will be uh, restricted to the rich? Okay. 
Actually, this question, I get it every day in my business field because, you know, a lot of people see on TV the, the promotions of the standalones, the townhouses, penthouses, and all of these things. I want administrative capital. They are just not for the rich. You know, there is a lot of million payment plans there. I want to say that you can pay approximately zero down payment. A zero down payment. And over 5, 10, 20 years, you can have your residence unit. Not just a zero down payment, you can pay a, pay a down payment with a very cheap uh, amount of money that can grant you a unit in the future for not just the rich, even though if you're not a rich, you're a middle class, you're a C-class uh, uh, population or a citizen, you can pay like, I, just, I, I don't want to say numbers, but if you just pay uh, a minimum approximately number, you can even have a something called, which is in the TV, I'm just saying this, something called ROI or obligatory rental contracts that will let you have a revenue or a rate of return on your down payment, which is can later on subsidiary, sub substitute on your payment. So finally, you can have the residential unit or a commercial unit by your down payment at the end of the uh, installment period. Mm -hmm. Well, the administrative capital includes a smart village. Uh, would you shed more light on uh, these smart villages? Okay, so first, what is the smart villages? Basically, smart villages are villages that has been built on a technology, AI-based. Everything is based on AI there. Um, first from the, the smart houses, the uh, not just the smart houses, but even the smart payments. There is a lot of payment gateways. Now you can make a purchase from your phones. You can pay from your phones. You don't have to wear a cash, have a cash on your pocket. Cryptocurrencies, even though it's a cryptocurrency, it's still illegal, but later on. And... The, 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 the idea of promoting uh, the smart villages of the innovation, mm -hmm. specifically. Egypt now, they are transferring to something called the digitalizing world. They are moving into digitalizing era. Mm -hmm. So the smart villages promote this idea. Yes. Uh, do you believe that the coronavirus pandemic has uh, contributed to raising awareness uh, to the importance of information technology? Yeah. Well, coronavirus, COVID-19, actually raised, yes, the, the, the idea of transforming into technology world. As you can see now, we have uh, a lot of solutions, especially in the campuses like Google Meetings, Google Teams, Zoom Meetings, and whatever. Um, back, uh, back then, people used to think it's, it's very hard for transferring to these programs because they have been... Uh, having a plan to transform in six years, but now the coronavirus strike, it's not, uh, you know, a clause in Egyptian uh, society. Mm -hmm. So it made people not just a voluntary, but obligation on the people to transform into digital world. Even though it's hard, we have to unlearn to learn. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, have people's perceptions uh, towards information technology changed recently? I mean, uh, in other words, have those people started to adapt in, uh, to the recent methods that uh, they used to reject before? They used to reject, uh, for example, uh, online meetings, uh, online education. Okay. So first, and I can remember when I was in university f back in like my third year or my second year, people have feared of moving from in-campus learning to an online meeting learning or or let me say e-learning the fear became here because people are let me say students sitting in their houses so how can we ensure the responsibility for the students to attend lectures to make their assignments or whatever in the e-learning era mm -hmm. even though the even though the process of the campus mm -hmm. It's not just the online meeting, but the inside the online meeting, there is a lot of functions that obligates the students to be obligated, have the responsibility to continue as learning processes. Yes. So yes, people, yes, back then rejected it because they have the fear of their students or how can we manage things like that. But now, yes, they, you know what I'm saying, uh, get used to it. Yes. Well, uh, the developed world has invested in creating technology to overcome uh, the problems of costly labor. Now, uh, how in our developing countries uh, are we going to use technology to create uh, job vacancies? Okay. 
one of the most concerns in, in the world of technology that technology will take ev over everything. They will take every employing or every vacant job available here. But that is not the thing, you know, AI or even a technology, the main purposes of it is to ease your kind of the field of your work. So the question said, how technology will offer a new vacant for mm -hmm. employees, right? We have to unlearn to learn new things. Like I want to shed light on on a computer science. Mm -hmm. Later back then, did you heard about a computer science just for programming, security hacking, and nothing else but that? But now, in the future, we have something like called AI technology programmers. We have machine learners. Even in the field of business, we have the business informatics. We have those of the financial technology, my kind of field. There is a lot of job open right now, especially in the business, not just for making uh, trial balances, uh, taxes, bills, and, and materials like that. But now we have a people inside of business. They are programming a financial technology field application like a well-known something like online banking right away right now even like you know the examples Fauri, bm online and and so on mm -hmm. right well uh, president abdel fatah el cc highlighted the efforts exerted to uh, create job opportunities to the youth uh, in uh, the new administrative capital okay how far is this implemented okay how far this is implemented right now and uh, the developers companies that is apparently working in the new administrative capital right away, they are hiring not just a graduated people, but they are hiring now a youth, even though they are undergraduated, they have the skills, they have the experience, then why not? This is the agenda of the youth, right or not? So right, in, right now, they are started to hire people, youth people not just the graduated six or seven years experience no they're just experience they are just hiring a fresh graduates or even undergraduates people they have skills and experience that benefits the new administrative capital mm -hmm. they are not just uh controlled by the rules of past of you mm -hmm. have to be a six year experience to, to make it to have a job no you can have a job now when you're even youth mm -hmm. you can make your money <coughs> when you're youth Right. Well, I would like to thank you very much, Basil Hagag, real estate analyst. Many thanks for joining us today it's live here on Altiv International. And dear viewers, uh, with this, we come to the end of this edition of Car Local Time. Many thanks for watching and stay tuned for more coming up here on Altiv International.